Hello, everybody. Hello. Let me start by addressing my gratitude to the team behind this big event. It's a really big achievement to bring so many people together. So, yeah, thank you very much. My topic today, the seven uh, core concept of psychosensuses is really lying at my heart. Um, when we started the institute, or to go to the institute in, in a couple of years ago, we decided to base the curriculum on the seven uh, core concepts. We really wanted the students uh, to realize, to experience these uh, fundamental concepts. I would like to uh, start to introduce the seven core concepts. Um, I guess you all are quite familiar with them, but let me start by reading them. While psychosynthesis is offered as a synthesis of various therapies and educational approaches, it is well to keep in mind that it possesses its own original and central essence. This is so as not to present a watered down and distorted version or one overcolored by the concepts and tendencies of the various contemporary schools. Certain fundamental facts, it's my underlining, exist and their relative conceptual elaboration, deep experience and understanding are central and constitute the sine qua non of psychosynthesis training. That means these concepts are indispensable uh, and essential ingredient if we are going to understand or live psychosynthesis. It has been stated before that Asajoli, in a very famous article or interview with Sankin, admitted that the limits with psychosynthesis is that it includes too much. It accepts too much. And perhaps this was his motivation, because this statement came uh, just uh, shortly before he died. So I guess his motivation perhaps was to, was to offer us some fundamental um, guidelines in our quest to become psychosynthesists. This is my take on the subject. So when we are offering training to students, these are the core experiences we are trying to give the students through the training. And of course, we must have these type of experiences ourselves in order to, to give them away. When we look at these concepts, we could ask, why does Asajoli name these seven concepts. Why are they so essential to psychosynthesis? This could be a very important question to ask. Because if this is the backbone, if this is the really core of psychosynthesis, we must ask uh, and we must answer these questions. And I would like to uh, offer my suggestion based on uh, the book that I just uh, published, uh, The Soul of Psychosynthesis, and based on my own uh, experiences with these concepts. I would like to bring disidentification and the self together, because I think they belong together. As a Jolie states that this identification is the mother of all the techniques used in psychosynthesis. So this is the, the basic technique that we have to have experiences with. And why is that disidentification so crucial? 
It's crucial and it's important because it reveals the true nature of the self. It reveals our nature, our identity as a point of pure self-consciousness or pure self-awareness and will. So by disidentifying, by using this specific technique, we are in some way um, letting go of all the different and various identifications we have. So it is a very, very deep technique. And I think actually that as a jolly when applying this identification, he brilliant, brilliantly uh, introduced one of the most famous and relevant techniques from the East into modern Western psychotherapy. Because this identification lies behind Vipassana uh, and in the Hinduism, the Advaita tradition of neti neti, I'm not this, I'm not that, and this particular exercise was intended to reveal the true nature of Brahman, the, the true identity of who I am, a point of pure consciousness. So he brings this Eastern techniques, central in Zen and central in, in many Buddhist and Hinduist and yogic schools, into Western psychology. And that is a very, very important step. The disidentification exercise um, can reveal our identity in several deep stages. It reveals the personal self, it reveals the transpersonal self, it reveals the universal self. And what are the, what, what's lying behind these concepts? <coughs> what's lying behind is that we realize ourselves as the observer. We realize ourselves as the loving observer which can observe the content of consciousness. And this is only uh, on a temporary level we, 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 we realize that I can I can observe my bodily sensation, I can, uh, I can observe my emotions, I can observe my mental states, uh, but on a wider scale, the disidentification exercise will also bring us beyond the mental and expand our consciousness into wider and wider spheres of existence with the direct effect that we identify with the whole and disidentify with personality. And what I really like about these seven core concepts is that he described them as facts, existential facts. So it's not a theory. Anybody who sits down and practices this will realize that my true nature is consciousness, that my true nature is will. So, when we, when we discover this, and millions of people all around the world has discovered this as, as a fact. There's nothing new about it, uh, but the will is actually quite new. I know that there has been some resistance in respect to Asajoli's uh, proposal of saying, I'm not the body. Uh, I'm not the emotion. Um, and he actually was well aware about the resistance. In a dialogue with his student, he replied and say that it is necessary to disidentify from the body, to disidentify from emotions and desire, in order to have the realization that I am pure self-consciousness. But that doesn't mean that we are not appreciating the body. It actually reveals two very profound experiences with the self, and this is that the self can be both transcendent and immanent in respect to any of the content of consciousness. The transcend 
nature of the self is that we, in some way, by disidentifying, bring a distance to what we observe in the consciousness. So we get, in some way, above it when we, when we observe whatever is present in our consciousness. But I think the prominent uh, statement by Asajoli is that he calls the, the self the loving observer. The loving observer. And by an act of love, by accepting our body, by appreciating our body, by accepting whatever is present in our consciousness, then we create a loving atmosphere, we create a relation, we create a, a, an ability to be in an empathetic relation to the body, the emotional, and our personality. So this realization is not about being transcendent and just rise above what else is. It is actually about incarnating fully in the body, incarnating fully in the emotional, incarnating fully in the mental, through an act of love, through this ability to embrace and be aware of whatever is present in the field of consciousness. When we apply this in, in therapy, then we use what I call awareness-based psychotherapy. Awareness-based psychotherapy. And what is awareness-based psychotherapy? It's the ability to learn the client to be a loving observer to whatever is his or her present condition. So when I work with clients, I start by saying to them that I have this idea that you are the observer to whatever happens in your life, that there is this, this conscious point within you, and you actually can learn to accept whatever is present in your mind, your emotional field. And then during therapy, I remind them again and again when they become identified with different parts of themselves, sub-personality, I remind them, oh, who's speaking now? What part of you is speaking now? Try to step a, a step back and try to observe what is present uh, right now. And then I train them to, to connect with the body, sense what's going on in your body, accept what's going on there, what's... Uh, what's uh, present in your emotional field? What do you think? So the awareness-based psychotherapy trains the client to be fully awake, aware, and present in a loving way with, with that condition. And this creates the center. The, so, the, the famous center and as Jolie uh, stated that psychosensis is uh, the first, from the first, the second, and the third, a work from the center. So psychosensis is so focused to, to point this center out to the client because if he or she first finds this ability to be a loving observer to whatever arises in consciousness, then they have found a home uh, and a place of freedom where they can start to conquer whatever is present in consciousness. The next two concepts I would like to, to go into is the will and the ideal model. I really love to to talk about the will as the will to be self. It is the innate, it's the innate, it's the uh, living energy that demands authenticity. It's the living force within each individual who really seek to be a unique individual. If the self was only consciousness, then we could talk about the self as an open self, 
You know, there was, we were just this open space with no boundaries. But in deep meditation, when we really go deep into pure consciousness and we lose connection with the mental and there's just this silence, then we can investigate who is, the, who is this being inside us who, who will meditate. There is always an intention. There's always a will present in every conscious state because I could decide to go out of the meditation if I would like to and so there is a, there's a guiding force there is a, a power within us that has chosen to be in any particularly uh, state of consciousness and I think as a journey really made a big big contribution to western psychology by introducing and and speaking about the will, and I see him as part of an, a, a larger movement. Um, I'm very fond of Sri Aurobindo uh, from, from India, who also changed the, the concept of, uh, it's not so much about getting out of here, you know, many of the traditional uh, religious um, um, uh, yeah, teachers, they, 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 they um, they had this concept of we have to get out of Maya, out of illusion, out of this world. But there has been a, a new evolutionary movement that brings much more to the front the need to get into the world. To get into the world with all the light, with all the power, with all the love that we have in order to change the world. And why is that? According to the evolutionaries, they, they claim that God wants to mani manifest God wants to incarnate on this world through us. So this is what will is about. Will is about synthesis. Will is about this driving force that tries to, to create a new world. And when we work with the will, then we work with the masculine face of the self. As a Jolie talk about the self as having a feminine and a masculine uh, face. Uh, the one is consciousness. Consciousness is the open feminine aspect. Will is the masculine aspect of the self. It's all, all, also in the same interview with Sam Keen. So the will is the inner authority and master. The will is our ability to define our identity. Out of infinite possibilities, the will is our possibility to find this is me. And why do we choose to, to become who we are? Because there is some guiding, guiding impulse within us, I would call it the soul, that make us choose something instead of something else. And we aligning with that force, uh, yeah, creates our cosmic address in yeah, to use a, a phrase from Ken Wilber we found our we find our place uh, in life and can take up that place and create that goodness and beauty and 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 power when we work with a will based uh, psychotherapy we focus on the client's authentic needs resources, values, and qualities. We help the client to define who he or she is by really confronting them with the responsibility of becoming themselves. And there's a big difference between desire and will because we know, sometimes we know who we are, but we are afraid of expressing it. So, so fear and desire becomes an obstacle to really express oneself. And will-based psychotherapy is more of the father therapy. It's more about uh, ex helping the client to express his unique identity. And by that we are using the ideal models. The ideal models is also a very unique contribution uh, to psychosynthesis, 
because they are images of what we could be. And they are actually based on creative meditation. Because we have to meditate, we have to live these images in order for them to become real. So, by using visualization and creative meditation, the ideal models helps the client to realize who she uh, needs to be. Synthesis. As we have already discussed, synthesis is a global, it's a cosmic force uh, that drives life toward uh, unity and wholeness. And Roberto as a journalist surely knew that life is inherently good. In, in the basic, life is good. But of course, there is also suffering due to our identification with the basic instinct uh, particularly self-preservation, greed, aggression, and selfishness. So, when working with senses uh, in practical work, we work with sub-personalities. We work with all the opposing forces within us that blocks our ability to be who we are. And I call this creative psychotherapy. Creative the psychotherapy as uh, as the way to, to liberate the self so we can be who we decide to be. And creative uh, psychotherapy used many means. It could be uh, uh, imaginary work, it could be uh, drawings, it could be chair work uh, from the Gestalt technique. It could be there are so many different uh, techniques for the client to discover their sub-personalities and uh, and uh, harmonize them, transform them. Uh, so the creative psychotherapy is, is part of, of, of creating synthesis. And I have really thought about what is, what is the results of synthesis, because what is really synthesis? And to be quite honest, I don't know. I don't really know what synthesis is. But what I know is the results of psychosynthesis, and this is flow. When we, and what is flow? Flow is the spontaneous, free ability to be who you are. After you have worked through a complex, some kind of a blockage, then when you are getting free of this, you feel this ease, this spontaneity, this flow, this ability just to be present and be who you are. So out of synthesis comes this ability to experience flow. The last two concepts, I know I don't have five minutes, okay. The last two concepts is the superconscious and the transpersonal self. And in order to really understand what is, what, what, what are these concepts dealing with, I think we must define what spirituality is. And one way to define spirituality is the expansion of consciousness from, from the self-centeredness to the universal uh, unity. And I, 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 I'm fond of using one of Ken Wilber's phrases. He said, that there are four different stages in the spiritual process. First, we need to develop self-care, love for oneself. The next expansion is care for family and others. This is the ethnocentric stage. This is, it, it is still about me and the one that I care for. The next stage is care for the world. This is the world-centric stage, and this, this uh, expansion of consciousness, when we uh, in some way really mm, try to act on behalf of humanity, if you like, when we really try to uphold the values in the declaration of the human rights and so on, we have this, this expanded consciousness of being at service in the world. This is an, a, an awareness from the soul. And the last stage is the cosmocentric state where we care for all there is in the entire cosmos. 
So spirituality is about taking care from one stage to the absolute stage. And one way to, to do that is to, to, uh, to help the client to, to harness the, the qualities and the superconscious qualities and bring them into, that, into life. There is two different uh, methods of, of uh, the spiritual uh, psychosynthesis. One is to, to really develop all the superconscious qualities through meditation and imagery work and bring them into life through different types of meditation. But the most radical way is to try to work directly on the I uh, self connection or the I soul connection. You know, you know that 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 thread uh, between the higher self, the transpersonal self, and the self. And this path has been called the silent path. So when you go into silent and really disidentify from all the content, also the content of the superconscious. There is a, a, an element of rising up. It's a spontaneous thing that is happening. Uh, and what, what is going on is that at some level, you, 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 you start um, getting rid of all the mental thoughts coming in and things getting much, much quieter. And then you get an expansion of consciousness where you actually realize that you are the whole that the consciousness that is present in everybody is also the consciousness that I am. And this is a, a realization of unity. And it's not something uh, profound, reserved for some very few mystics. This is, uh, lies at the possibility for every one of us. We just have to do the yoga. We just have to do the, the seven uh, essential uh, core concepts and make them into practical work. I guess that was my final word. Thank you. Thank you.